Hey, it's Dave here from the How to Podcast series. Welcome. Nice to have you here with me. Got an interesting update from Buzzsprout. And uh, they posted on Instagram saying goodbye to Instagram. Interesting. And uh, they're just mentioning that they're going to switch gears and move somewhere else and do their content somewhere different. wonder what that means for us as podcasters. We can talk about it here on the How to Podcast series. Here we go. So I have three podcasts on Buzzsprout. I love them. Got links in the show notes if you want to try them out. Um, Buzzsprout's great. They give you great analytics. They are super helpful. They are not the other people, <laughs> which I love. And uh, I really enjoy them. And I think I think if, if I was to recommend any of them, based on my use as a podcaster, I would say Buzzsprout is probably one of my top choices for hosting my podcast. So if you're enjoying this, check out Buzzsprout. And when they posted on Facebook, or sorry, on Instagram just recently that they were switching gears, this was what they said. Buzzsprout has decided to stop posting new content on Instagram. We've always been passionate about teaching people to podcast. And while social media can be an effective tool for lots of podcasters, and here we go, you ready for this? It wasn't the best way for us to teach podcasting. Oh my what? It wasn't the best way for us to teach podcasting. Instead, we'll be focusing on creating great content for you for our blog, podcast, and YouTube channel. Hope to see you there. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. They shut down my accounts. They bring them back. I've got, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to, to cancel your Instagram account or shut it off. We made a mistake. Like, I don't know what's going on over there, but they are just horrid. And you're trying to build this community. And the only way that you can build community on Instagram is to be posting like a ninja. Every five, 10 seconds, you got to be posting something ridiculous. And they've gone from being this taking pictures and sharing photos and communicating with your followers to becoming this machine that has to be fed on a regular basis. And it is just insurmountable. And the one thing that I'm just having a hard time with is the content that goes into supplying Instagram and all the work and all the efforts and all the stuff you do, creating stuff natively on their on their app, has no shelf life. It doesn't last for any length of time. And when I was doing some research, looking at the apps that people are using now, specifically the next generation of users. A lot of people spend a lot of time talking about Facebook and how amazing Facebook is for their podcast. And everyone should be on Facebook. Facebook is dying. Uh, the, the average age of a Facebook user is getting older and older and older. It is the place where your grandparents go to talk to each other. It is that place where fun goes to die. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> so Instagram is not that far off, though. They've completely lost their way as an app, and people have come in and taken their lunch. So there's a, a graph showing the use, using uh, usage of apps for teenagers, 13 to 17 U.S. numbers. Put it, a link in the show notes. And if you look at this while you listen to this podcast, some interesting things come to light. So back in 2014, 2015, the average number of 13 to 17 year olds on Facebook was 71% of youth that age were on Facebook. Today in 2022, 32% are on Facebook. Ow. Well, again, because all of their grandparents are on there and they don't want to be talking to grandma on their social media app. So we jump over to Instagram. 2014, 2015, students 13 to 17, there's about 52% on Instagram, which jumped up to 62% in 2022. That's awesome. Except for the fact that TikTok just shows up out of nowhere at 67% and takes Instagram's lunch like a bully in the lunchroom 
and puts Instagram in the corner. That happened like instantly. The one number that I love here is YouTube. 95% of students between 13 to 17, 95% live on YouTube. And if you want to be where your audience will be, not where they are or where they're leaving from or dying off of, you want to be where your audience is going. So when you look at trends like this and you see YouTube, you see TikTok, Snapchat's really big as well, 59%. As you look at where your audience is going, and I'm talking about the next generation, 13 to 17 year olds, isn't that a better focus than a 60 to 70 year old user? Maybe that's who your podcast is for and that's who you should focus on. But if you're looking long-term and growth, you want to look at where your audience is going to be. I bring in Wayne Gretzky, for example, hockey player, or everybody who knows hockey, Wayne Gretzky known as the great one. Wayne had a way of playing hockey in a way that he could formulate plays to where they were going to be, not where they were. So he wouldn't pass the puck to you across the ice where you were standing right now, but where you'd be skating too. The puck would be there waiting for you when you got there. He was always focused on what was coming, not where what was happening. And I think as podcasters, that's a big lesson we can learn. We can learn the Gretzky method, and we can all be focused on what's coming instead of where we are or what's dying. Facebook. So let's focus in on YouTube. Let's focus in on TikTok. Instagram, I don't know. They're not, they're not living up to all the hype of who they are and what they could be. And I think they're leaving their audience out as they try to find their sense of identity. YouTube has a lot of evergreen benefit. Instagram is losing that evergreen content. It's not a resource for evergreen, eternal, long-term. People won't come back to your Instagram account and see what you posted two years ago. They will do that on YouTube. Instagram's not highly searchable. I know we talk about hashtags, but you know what? YouTube doesn't need that. YouTube is searchable in the sense of the content and what's in there. Focus on what's easy for you and what's easy for your audience. YouTube is a great complimentary platform for your podcast and very easy to use and very easy to bring your customers to and link to. Uh, I love it. It really works seamlessly between people on a mobile phone or a desktop, wherever they're listening to your podcast, they can access YouTube just as much as they can access your podcast. They really go well together. So my big focus for 2023, as I looked ahead at these numbers and see where people are going, is I'm focusing on YouTube, focusing in as well as on a uh, newsletter. Email is still alive. It's still kicking. And it's still a great way to touch your audience and reach out and and have access to the people who's, who give you access to their life. If you give them great content and you reach out to them on a regular basis and you help them and they find value in what you do, they will accept those emails. They will accept that content. They will accept that contact from you as a content creator. So for me, YouTube and a newsletter is, is the best focus for me and what I'm doing. And by focusing on you know, what works for me, it creates a time leverage that helps me do what I do best and spend more time with my listeners and less time creating for any one given platform. So just a few thoughts to think about. Instagram rewards the recency but YouTube rewards the commitment and gives you that evergreen content that you can go and access way down the line. So Buzzsprout is taking the lead here. Again, they jumped up on Instagram saying goodbye to Instagram. And I thought, wow, that's a big statement. What is your focus for 2023? Who are you saying goodbye to in 2023? Who serves you and who doesn't? For me, 
I'm looking at Facebook. The numbers are, can't lie. And if I want to be where my audience is going to be, if I want that Gretzky method, I want to be able to put my my content in front of where the audience will be, not where they are exiting from. So think about it. And what works for you? What works for your content? What works for your podcast? Who are your listeners? And we talked about that way back in the beginning of the How to Podcast series was identifying who your audience is. If your audience is 60 to 70 to 80 year olds, then maybe Facebook is the perfect place for you. Then that is great. Do that. Do it well. Connect. Be with them. But if you want to speak to a 17 year old, you better be looking at these numbers and going, okay, it, the numbers are falling away for some of these apps. And I need to focus on what works for me and then put my my time and effort into the, the areas that serve me the best. Go where your audience is, not where they used to be. That's kind of my thought for today. So thanks, Buzzsprout. Again, if you're interested in Buzzsprout, there's links in the show notes if you want to try them out. I love them for my podcasts. They do great work for me, and I've never been disappointed with them. So check them out. And again, links are there if you want to try them out. And uh, thank you for being part of How the Podcast Series. More stuff coming in the future. I got to jump now to a, an interview. So I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Hey, this is Dave from the podcast. Thank you for listening to the How to Podcast Series. We have a new website, easy to find. How to podcast dot C-A, not dot com, dot C-A. I'm in Canada, so dot C-A. How to podcast dot C-A is how to find us. How easy is that, right? How did I get that domain? Oh, how to podcast, how to podcast dot C-A. Link in the show note below. This is just a quick little thing to let you know, hey, the website's being worked on. It's active. You can go there now. Howtopodcast.ca. I would love for you to come over there. It's not the .com. Somebody already had that. I have the .ca because I live in Canada. Ta-da! So, howtopodcast.ca. I'll see you over there. Thank you for being part of the podcast. Make sure you subscribe, like, follow, and do all the things we ask you to do. Catch you on the next one.